welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at Linux Mint Debian Edition 7. This is an alternative version of Linux Mint which, as the name suggests, is based on Debian rather than Ubuntu. Over the years on this channel I've made lots of content featuring the regular version of Linux Mint, but I've never run LMDE. And so, with version 7, known as Gigi, having just been released, it seems an excellent time to take a closer look. Right, here we are on the Linux Mint website, where the focus is on Linux Mint 22.2, known as Zara. This is the latest version of the standard edition of Linux Mint, and is recommended for most users. Linux Mint 22.2 is based on Ubuntu. To explain what this means, all Linux distributions or distros include the Linux kernel, which is the core component of the operating system. The kernel interfaces directly with the computer hardware and contains the drivers for most peripherals. But in addition to the kernel, all distros need to include other components such as a bootloader, display server, desktop environment, software manager, and some pre-installed applications. Rather than building everything from scratch, most Linux distros take an existing one, such as Debian, Ubuntu, Arch, Red Hat, Slackware, or Gentoo, and make changes to it to create their own Linux operating system. Using another distro as a foundation saves developers a lot of time. However, it inevitably creates a level of dependency on their chosen foundation and may inherit some of its limitations. Since November 2006, the main version of Linux Mint has been based on Ubuntu, which in turn is based on Debian. In general, Ubuntu has better hardware and driver support, better proprietary software support, and more up-to-date libraries and applications than the stable release of Debian. And this is why the standard edition of Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu and not Debian directly. However, it does mean that the future of Linux Mint could be in doubt if Ubuntu was ever withdrawn, or, as it's far more likely, Ubuntu implemented a fundamental change that Linux Mint did not want to include and could not easily remove. And this is why Linux Mint has developed its Debian edition, or LMDE. Returning to the Linux Mint website, we can find LMDE lurking under download and other versions, and this takes us to a page for the latest version, LMDE 7 or GG, and explains that the goal is to ensure Linux Mint can continue to deliver the same user experience if Ubuntu was ever to disappear. It allows us to assess how much we depend on Ubuntu and how much work would be involved in such an event. LMDE is also one of our development targets, and as such, it guarantees the software we develop is compatible outside of Ubuntu. So, let's now scroll on down to a download the operating system. Here we are, and we have a download link, and if we click on it, we will find lots of places we can download from. And as I'm in UK, I'm going to go all the way down here to UK and find a mirror server in the UK. And as usual, I'll avail myself of the University of Kent mirror service and save the ISO file. There we go, we have our 2.8 gigabyte LMDE7 ISO file, and here we're actually running Linux Mint, the standard edition, and I've got Belayda Etcher all ready to go to write our ISO file to a USB drive. So we'll just pick up the ISO file, and click on Flash. And of course, as we're in Linux, enter our password, and Etcher will get on with its task of creating a bootable USB drive for LMD7. And just before someone asks in the comments, I could have used the USB image writer application available here in accessories, all the way down the bottom here. Uh, there it is. I could have used this program here in Linux, but I prefer Etcher as it has wider functionality, which is useful when I'm working with single board computers. Greetings! Here we are booting from our LMDE7 USB drive on my i5-10400 test rig. 
and we've arrived at the grub boot menu so let's press enter to start LMDE 7 64 bit and we'll use the magic of filmmaking to speed on through until we arrive on a very familiar cinnamon desktop. Although we won't take a look around straight away running from the USB drive, we're going to do a bare metal install. So let's launch the installer, which is different to the installer in the regular edition of Linux Mint because that one's based on Ubuntu and this one, surprise, surprise, is based on Debian. So let's click on Let's Go. Or we have to pick our language, already selected for me, so I'll click on Next. And we'll then do our time zone, which is also already correct, so I'll just click on Next again. Or we have to pick our keyboard layout. I like the picture here, and again, it's got things right, so I can click straight on Next. After which, we need to enter the details for our local user account. Following that, we then need to select our installation type, which is going to be an automated installation to a completely clean SSD, which is a, that one there like that. And again, we'll click on next. After which, hardly surprisingly, it gives us a warning to check we really want to do this. Yes, we do. After which, we have an advanced option screen giving us the choice of where we place the Grub boot menu. And I'll stick here with the default and click on next. And then, oh look, it's given us a nice summary. There we are, everything is nice and clear. And so finally, I'll click on Install. And whilst the installer does its business, I thought we'd quickly compare it to the one in Linux Mint 22. Where, aside from things being presented in a different order, the key difference is that in the Linux Mint 22 installer, we're given the option to install third-party multimedia codecs, which I'd always recommend. But in the LMDE 7 installer, as we can see as we cycle through, this option is never presented. Anyway, with our comparison complete, our installation of LMDE 7 has finished, so we can click on Yes, remove our installation media, and boot into our new operating system, which has a slightly different Grub Boot menu than the one we see with Linux Mint 22, although after that, things are very similar. So let's enter our password. And there we are, we're welcome to Linux Mint with its first run wizard. Although I'm going to turn this off and also make a few scaling changes as I always do to make things look better on video. And I'll come back to you after that. Right. Here I am back again with things tweaked to be easier on our eyes. As some of you may have noticed, the first run wizard that I rapidly closed in the last part of the video did have an option to install the multimedia codecs that we didn't have a chance to obtain in the installer. But regardless, fairly soon after I finished the install, LMDE 7 prompted me to do three things. Firstly, it suggested to install language packs for Firefox to support my language, which I did. Secondly, it also prompted me to install the multimedia codecs, which I also followed through. And after that, there was a the usual suggestion to set up a time shift system restore utility, as always pops up in the regular edition of Linux Mint after a clean install. With all this done, LMDE 7 looks and behaves just like Linux Mint 22, which is kind of the point. And it clearly proves that the Linux Mint project is not dependent on Ubuntu. Just to show how similar things are, if we open up the file manager, it looks like this. And in Linux Mint 22, it looks like this. Or if we open the software manager on the menu just there, it looks like this, which is just what it looks like in Linux Mint 22. And I guess this is what we'd expect as LMDE 7 uses the default Linux Mint Cinnamon desktop. When it comes to pre-installed applications, if we go to the menu and do a quick comparison, we see that we have exactly the same program categories with pretty much the same software installed within them. Indeed, there's only one key difference, which we'll return to in the next part of the video. And if you already noticed it here in the menus, you deserve to win a lollipop.
So, given how similar LMDE 7 is to Linux Mint 22, why should anybody choose to run it? Well, the first answer to this very good question is that the regular edition of Linux Mint does remain the best choice for most users. However, there are some potential reasons to pick LMDE 7. For a start, because it's based directly on Debian, LMDE 7 is a little leaner than regular Ubuntu-based Linux Mint. And so, LMDE may potentially run a little better on older hardware. More specifically, because it's based on Debian 13, by default LMDE 7 locates its TMP temporary folder in RAM instead of on the system drive. And this means that applications which heavily rely on temporary files will be more responsive, especially on computers with a lot of memory. In addition, and again because it's based on Debian 13, LMDE 7 benefits from using the latest APT 3.0 advanced package tool. This improves the handling of conflicts during application installs, as well as having clearer installation progress bars in the terminal along with colour coding that shows packages being installed in green with removals in red. And we can at least partially demonstrate this by opening up a terminal like that and doing an install. So, for example, let's do a sudo apt install like that to install the Solitaire game. And of course we have to enter our password and as we can see, things to be installed are indeed coloured in green. So let's do a Y and enter. And we have a nice little progress bar at the bottom of the screen. And if that's all worked, I'm sure it has, we can look in the menu where we now have a games entry and oh look, we can launch Solitaire. As an aside, note that Linux Mint 23, which is expected to release in mid-2026, should include APT 3.0 and RAM-based temp files, as it will be based on Ubuntu 26.04, which will in turn be based on Debian 13. So, right now, one reason to consider LMDE 7 is that it provides access to Debian 13 technologies whilst the main version of Linux Mint remains with code based on Debian 12. Greetings! Here I am, back again, and look, I've changed the desktop background. Linux Mint always used to have a green default wallpaper, and so I've selected a mint curled option for us here. Anyway, this segment is not about the colour of the desktop, but more fundamentally about what is missing in LMDE 7 compared to the standard edition of Linux Mint. And if we go back to the menu comparison from earlier, as some of you may have noticed, a key difference is that in Linux Mint 22, under administration, there's an entry for a driver manager, whilst in LMDE 7, no such entry exists. Now, whether this matters depends on your hardware and what you want to do with it. And these days, most drivers are included in the Linux kernel, so for many users, not having the graphical driver manager will not be a problem. However, whilst the Linux kernel includes the best drivers for AMD and Intel GPUs, it does not include proprietary drivers for NVIDIA GPUs. And so, if you have NVIDIA graphics, not having the graphical driver manager here in LMDE 7 is significant. To highlight the difference, if we go over to my clean install of Linux Mint 22 and go to Administration and Driver Manager, the graphical tool will look for additional and proprietary drivers. And on this computer with an NVIDIA graphics card, it will list a range of possible and recommended drivers from NVIDIA and to change from the more limited default open source driver, all we have to do is to click on the recommended driver, apply changes, enter our password, and wait for everything to be installed. And so, like in Ubuntu or Zorin OS, it's very easy to install the best NVIDIA graphics drivers in the regular edition of Linux Mint. In contrast, here in LMDE 7, you can only install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers via the terminal. 
In theory, you may just need to execute a sudo apt update, which I've already done on this system, followed by a sudo apt install NVIDIA driver. However, as you will discover in some online forums, it's not always quite as straightforward as this, and you may need to go through a more laborious process, as is detailed on this Debian wiki page, all about installing NVIDIA drivers on Debian and related Linux distros. Now, on this system, I've yet to try executing this command, which may well work. However, if you have NVIDIA graphics and are new to Linux, do keep in mind the lack of the graphical driver manager in LMD7. But to finish, let's see what happens if we execute this command. And clearly many things are going to be installed, so we'll go Y and Enter. And we get this message of a conflict with the currently installed open source driver. That's hardly a surprise, so we'll just click on OK. And in theory, all is complete. So let's try a reboot. And as we can see, things here are not ideal. I'm being asked to log in in the terminal, not in a graphical environment. I will log in. And that's as far as we get. We don't have our graphical desktop. And this could, I'm sure, be fixed by entering the right terminal commands. But as I said a few moments ago, if you are new to Linux and you have NVIDIA graphics on your computer, you do need to be very aware that there isn't a graphical driver manager in LMD7. LMDE is an interesting distro as it exists as a backup plan to make sure that Linux Mint is not entirely dependent on Ubuntu. And in this respect, all users of Linux Mint should be grateful that LMDE exists. For beginners, the standard version of Linux Mint is very much still recommended. But for experienced users, it's worth considering LMDE 7, especially on older hardware, which may benefit from a slightly less resource-intensive distro. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Uh -oh.